If you want to learn to make healthy and tasty Mediterranean home cooking because you're tired of eating minute rice and prepackaged fried chicken in your studio apartment while you pretend to be a functioning adult, you've come to the right place. My family is from Spain and Greece. Growing up, I would have tortilla, paella, cocido, spanakopita, faques, and a bunch of other dishes that are hard to find in the States if you don't know how to make them yourself. Luckily, the tools you need to make most of those recipes are easy to find, and most of them are pretty cheap. Here are the 16 essential tools you'll need to get started with Mediterranean cuisine. Disclaimer, this is not a list of every tool you'll need to make every Mediterranean dish ever. If you're just getting started, you're better off starting with a small and flexible set of tools that you can use to make a wide variety of classic dishes. First off, get yourself a chef's knife. Any chef's knife. Preferably cheap as possible because you'll be abusing the hell out of it, especially at first. You can chop vegetables, mince spices, and slice meat all with this single knife. I bought this one at a local supermarket for about $10. While you're at it, buy a whetstone to keep the knife sharp. You can buy one of these online for about 20 bucks. A $10 chef knife that you keep sharp beats a $30 chef knife that you don't any day. Next up, you'll need a wooden cutting board, big as you can find. An added bonus is if it has rubber feet on the bottom to keep it from sliding around. If you can't find one of those, just get the cheapest wooden one you can find and put it on a dish rack to keep it from sliding around as much. Also, never put your wooden cutting board in the dishwasher or leave it soaking in the sink overnight. If you do that enough times, this will happen. Here we have the cornerstone of any Spanish or Greek kitchen, a stovetop pressure cooker. These can cost you anywhere between $50 and $200 and it's the best money you will ever spend on a kitchen appliance. With a pressure cooker, you can make a lot of traditional Mediterranean recipes that would otherwise take hours and minutes. If you're buying one for the first time, I highly suggest going for an 8-quart over a 6-quart. It's not that much more expensive for the same brand, and you can do absolutely ludicrous things like make a 10-pound turkey in it for Thanksgiving. Seriously, I've done it the last two Thanksgivings in a row. Some of you may be asking, hey, can I use an electric pressure cooker like an Instant Pot instead? Sure, you could, but some of us cheapskates have cooking gas included in rent. And can you really compete with that classic pressure cooker quick release noise? No list of the basics is complete without a long wooden spoon. You'll be using this to stir a lot of hot liquids and prevent things from sticking. Go for one that's long and sturdy, the kind of thing you feel like you could box someone over the head with. Next up, we have a meat thermometer. You can buy one of these in pretty much any North American supermarket for just a few bucks. I hear some of you say, my yaya doesn't use a meat thermometer, why should I? Your yaya has been cooking for 50 years longer than you and I have. Trust me on this, especially if you're even thinking of making chicken or poultry. Your stomach will thank you. The first and only truly modern appliance on this list is a small food processor. This will make recipes where you have to crush or finely chop ingredients much faster and easier. If you're a purist or a big fan of the Stone Age, buy a mortar and pestle. Another absolute essential is a saucepan. Chances are, if you've ever tried to cook anything, you already have one of these. Try to look for one with a relatively thick bottom. You're less likely to burn things that way. If it doesn't come with a lid, buy an aftermarket one like this one with a silicone ring so that it can fit on top. That'll help with steaming some things. Next up, we have a regular frying pan. As with saucepans, the thicker the bottom, the better. Stay away from Teflon ones because they degrade and release harmful chemicals in your food if you burn stuff, which you totally will at first. And remember to use a generous amount of oil. There's no such thing as a 100% non-stick pan. If you plan on baking, you're going to need an oven-safe pan. The most versatile one is a round pan with about a three-inch lip. You can use this for making vegetables and baking desserts and pies. For general measuring, get a glass two-cup measure. This one has both imperial and metric, and it's good for dry and wet goods. For you pie and pastry lovers, get yourself a plasti. You can buy a rod that's about three-quarters of an inch thick and a yard long at any hardware store. It's great for rolling out super thin sheets of pastry. To lift things out of pans without burning yourself, get a good metal spatula. For recipes that call for canned goods and paste, have a good, no frills, reliable can opener lying around. There's no good substitute for a good colander for washing leafy greens and legumes. Get yourself a big one, and other than that, don't worry about it too much. And that's it. You can make every recipe on this channel with just the tools on this table. Anyone who says you need to spend a fortune to make really good food is trying to compensate for a lack of skill with money, and that never works. If you have these essentials, all that's really left is to get started. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed today's video or found it useful, please consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel. Also, let me know in the comments which of the 10 tools gave you the most nostalgia. For me, it's definitely the cracked cutting board. See you in the next video, and as always, don't cook angry.